Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are on the next episode of Investing 101. So in my previous episode, I discussed the importance of having an emergency fund and a savings account. So if you have not watched that yet, stop this video and go back to part one. You cannot continue watching the series without watching that first episode. It is the most important part in investing. I know many people struggle putting money aside as they're stuck in financial debt and they have this idea that you have to pay off all your bills first then put money aside but i'm happy to tell you that's not the case there is a way you're able to pay off your bills avoid interest and put money aside for your savings or emergency fund in this video i'm here to explain that so let's get started <music> If you're looking to save but don't know how because you're in financial debt, keep watching this video. Let's say you're in $2,000 of credit card debt, have $1,500 of monthly expenses, $15,000 worth of student loan debt, but you only receive a paycheck of $2,000 every other week. I am happy to inform you that there is a way you can still put money aside, lower your debt, and avoid interest. The secret is to live below your means and invest early and often. I suggest having a calendar laying out your income and expenses due date. Let's use this calendar as an example. Listed are the days you receive money and the days you owe money. Every other Friday, you get paid $2,000. Rent is due on the 7th of the month, your student loan payment is the 23rd, and your credit card due date is the 22nd, while the closing date is the 25th. If you watched my previous video on credit card, you know you only need to pay the minimum balance by the due date. The minimum balance for most credit cards is 3% of the principal, or $10, whichever is higher. In this case, 3% is higher as it results to owing $60 as the minimum payment. The APR is 20%. The interest is calculated by multiplying 20% by the principal and dividing it by 12. This will give you $33.33 worth of interest. Keep in mind when you pay the minimum balance, you are paying off the interest first and whatever is left over will go to the principal amount. In this scenario, only $26.67 will go to the principal amount if you only pay the minimum balance of $60, leaving your remaining balance $1,973.33. If you decide to go this route of paying off your credit card, you will then pay $4,240 over the next 15 years, not including future purchases you might make. To avoid this, I suggest paying the minimum at least $100, better than 60. Now that you understand how credit cards work, let's go back to how to manage your money. It's Friday, May 4th, payday. First thing you need to pay off is your rent and expenses. If possible, use your credit card to pay off your rent. By using your credit card, you will receive benefits compared to if you use your debit or checking account. Depending on the type of credit card you have, you will receive a certain amount of cash back. In other words, you are getting paid to spend money on something you was gonna pay for regardless. Now, you use your credit card to pay off your rent and that results in a new credit card balance of $3,500. With the remaining statement balance of 2,000, minimum payment O 60, and you receive 2% cash back of $30. Next, you will use your paycheck that you receive to pay off that $1,500 you use your credit card for. Making your updated credit card statement $2,000 for the current balance, leaving the remaining statement balance $500, and the minimum payment required is already paid for. Although you are back to the same principal amount you started with, the remaining statement balance is now $500, leaving you to only pay $500 by the 25th of May, and you don't have to pay anything by the 22nd. Now, it's May 8th and you have $500 left on your paycheck. I would suggest you use that $500 to pay off that remaining amount required due on the 25th of May, leaving you with only $0 in your checking account. And you have one week and three days before you receive your next paycheck. At this point, you're living off your credit card, which sucks. 
But let's say during that week, you spent $200 on your credit card paying for grocery, gas, and a spa day. Your new credit card statement is $2,200. Your statement balance is now zero, minimum payment zero, and you receive $4 cash back based off that $200 you spent, totaling up to $34 cash back. It is May 18th now, and you got your next paycheck, finally. Now that all your bills and expenses are paid off, what should you do next? If you watched my previous video on investing one-on-one, you would know to take at least 10% of your paycheck and put it into your savings and or emergency account. Your paycheck should be allocated like this. Put $300 towards your savings and emergency account, $200 towards your student loan, keep $300 in your checking account, pay $1,000 to your credit card, have $200 for your personal spending. You can play around with it. It doesn't have to be allocated in this format, but just make sure you put money aside for your savings and emergency account and have a little something for yourself. You don't have to follow to the T on how you can allocate your paycheck. That was just an example of one way you can allocate your paycheck. But as long as you put 10% of your paycheck towards your savings and emergency fund, that's all that matters to me. That's the most important part. We at the end of May now, and not only was you able to pay down your credit card and avoid interest, you was also able to not only put money to your savings and emergency fund, but also have some money sitting in your checking account. So let's look at your financial report. In the beginning of May, you had $0 in your checking account. You are now ending the month with 300 Also, you didn't even have a savings or emergency fund, and you now have $300 towards that as well. Or in my case, 150 in your savings account, 150 in emergency fund. You also now only owe $1,200 to your credit card. Amazing, you didn't even have to pay any interest or late fee. Tell you this, by your next paycheck in two weeks, if you don't spend no money on your credit card, if you don't use your credit card at all in the next two weeks, your credit card balance can be zero by your next paycheck and you're out of credit card debt. In addition, you have money aside to put more to your savings account and money in your pocket. My mother always told me, treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. So there you have it. It's possible to enjoy life and be financially responsible. So if you listen to all the tips I was able to give you, you are on the road to financial freedom. Now, get ready for my next episode on Investing 101. See you guys then. Bye.